Praise God. Everybody stand up, miss. You know, we were in the presence of the Lord, and we didn't get out of the presence of the Lord because the, where the presence of the Lord is, there's fullness of joy. And the glory of God's inside of us. Amen. When you raise your hands, remind yourself. I asked the Lord one time, I said, God, I said, why is it that we speak in tongues? And, of course, I've always heard everybody teach and say that the reason why we speak in tongues is because we are showing the evidence. And so the Lord said to me, it's the evidence. And I said, well, why is it? And the Lord because every time you speak in tongues, you're showing that I'm inside of you. Hallelujah. And so when you raise your hands, what you're doing is you're raising your hands and you are showing yourself and reminding yourself that you're in the ark of the presence of God. And when you raise your arms are like the wings of the seraphim that are over top of that box. And God's trying to tell us that the, the glory is no longer in a box. It's inside of us. Hallelujah. Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead's inside your belly. Hallelujah. It quickens your flesh. See, everywhere we go, we walk in the presence of God. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there's fullness of joy. Joy for somebody that's sick is healing. Hallelujah. Healing inside of you. Joy for somebody that's poor is to be rich. Hallelujah. You're a rich man waiting to happen. Are you all with me? Sadness doesn't belong in the kingdom. Joy is in heaven. Hallelujah. The Bible says, he that sits in heaven laughs. I laugh at sickness. I laugh at poverty. Devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I want you to raise your hands up there and just begin to worship him right now. Father, we honor your presence. We thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke, lifts every burden, manifests yourself in us tonight. Oh, Father, we worship you. Lord, the song in the background right now is, is an easy song. It's a song that everybody can sing. Turn it up just a little bit. It's a song that every language can sing. It's a song that every individual can sing. It's a song that a child can sing. It's a song that an adult can sing. It's a song that an elderly can sing. We can all sing this song. And Father, when we get to heaven, I believe around your throne, we're going to sing this song. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hands up there now and just begin to worship him. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sing it to him now. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Father, we worship you. We praise you tonight. We honor your presence in this place. We thank you that when we come together, you are here in our midst. When we become one voice, one mind, one spirit, your Holy Spirit is poured out upon all flesh. Lord, it's not just upon a few. It's not just upon the men. It's not just upon the women. But it's upon the children. It's upon the next generation. And Father, our desire tonight is to be filled with that glory. To be filled with that presence. Lord, fill us up right now. Lord, as we're traveling around the world, your word is being fulfilled. You're shaking nations. And Father, nations are not continents. We're nations. We're nations. You said, Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. And tonight, Lord, we say, fill us up. Fill us up. Fill us with your glory. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lamb of God. Our presence is here now. His presence is here right now. One of the things that God has been speaking to my heart, and we've been seeing it in the nations, God says, I don't want to just fill individuals. I want to fill cities. I want to fill atmospheres. I want to shake nations. All the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. It doesn't say it will be filled with the glory. It says it will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Because when we understand the glory, the glory is inside of us. And when we begin to fill up with that glory, all of a sudden something begins to over out of us. And it begins to saturate the very building we're in. Hallelujah. And it starts to fill. It starts to the, to the knees and to the, to the waist and all the way to the shoulders. And the glory of God begins to literally fill the atmosphere. And when that happens, do you know what God does? He starts to go from the deep and he starts to deal with things inside starts to have miracles in your life that I don't know. As a prophet, I can only know what he reveals. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about her. He knows everything about your children. He knows the prayers you pray in the middle of the night. He knows everything about you. Create an atmosphere of the glory of God. It's God's way of coming into the atmosphere and begin to minister to you individually as you desire and as he desires. There's a place that I can't go to, but it's a place where he's always at. And he's here tonight. Amen. He's here tonight. keeps shutting off on me my uh pastor never that's just the devil then amen amen he's the soundboard but we're going to rebuke the devil <laughs> amen Hallelujah. Devil, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off of this meeting. Take your hands off of the move of God, off of the microphone.
me thank you for it, Father. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Say greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. That he's given me power. Head upon serpents and scorpions. Because the great abides in me. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. He who sits in heaven laughs. I know where I'm seated, praise God. So when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against him. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. I, I, honey, stand up. I want you to stay standing. This is my lovely wife, Rosa Maria. Amen. And uh, it's a pleasure to have her here tonight. Amen. I asked her, do you want to say anything? She said, not tonight. Amen. And, uh, but uh, what a tremendous anointing upon her life. God uses her prophetically. She's got tremendous giftings and a great teacher of the Word of God. Amen. And not only that, she's a lovely wife and a great mom. Amen. We love you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us and there's something happening in the atmosphere of the world in the church today. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, that in the last days, he said the church will have a form of godliness. Look at that. The Bible gives us power over principalities and power. It gives us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Do you know what? Come on, somebody. He gives physical drugs. He sent his son to heal us, praise God. He already carried our sicknesses, carried our burdens, and carried everything that's contrary to the divine health that he gave us. Can you say amen? And so he's given us power to tread on serpents. You know what a serpent is, don't you? It's the one that goes up the pole. Are you all with me? You see it on all the drugs you take. <laughs> you see it on all the, the Lord says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God doesn't want you to be droggy. He don't want you to have, blame, uh, have your brain all blurry and fur and, and blocked and things. He wants you to be all over your body and want you continually attacked in your physical emotionally you can't make it anymore he treads upon he gave us authority all power all authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions how many know the Bible talks about the scorpions in Deuteronomy chapter 8? Right after he says he gives us power to get wealth. Amen. The word power there means he gives us the ability to accomplish wealth when we don't have a thing to accomplish. Because he is wealth. Can you say amen? But the Bible tells us we can tread upon scorpions. He told the, the children of Israel, you're going to go. There'll be several scorpions. He said, but they won't sting you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me? Amen. See, we got power to tread on. I want you to stand up. God's going to heal your body. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hands up there. Close your eyes. 
the power of God's coming on you right now, and I'm going to break the spirit of infirmity that's been attacking your body. This spirit of infirmity has been keeping you up all night long. This spirit of infirmity has been causing you to not be able to sleep, to not be able to come into peace. It's like everything around you is just falling apart. And it's even brought you to a point where you've said things that you've taken back and you've asked God to forgive you for. And I heard the Lord say, the pains in your joints, the pain all over your body is going to be broken tonight. And not only is that going to be broken, but that offense that's in your mind and in your mental capacity is going to be stopped tonight in Jesus' name. No more torment. That's what I heard the Lord say, no more torment. No more torment. Come out here in the middle of the aisle. I know you want to. You come out here in the middle of the aisle. Raise your hands up there now. Power of God's to fall on you. The glory of the Lord. Spirit of infirmity. With the spirit of joy. Name of Jesus. I release it right now. Spirit of infirmity. You in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get off of her now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath and breathe out. Here it comes in Jesus' name. Be free. In Jesus' name. Right now. In the name of Jesus, I release it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. That's the power of God falling on you right now. In Jesus' name. Now stand back up here. Because you're going to see now you can stand up without any problem. Go ahead and walk. Yep, go ahead and walk. You telling me no? Go ahead and walk. Come on, walk with me. Go ahead and walk. You want me to walk with you? Come here, come here. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. The Lord pointed you out because he wants to heal you. I don't know you. I've never seen you before in my life. Maybe I have, but I don't remember. But the Lord brought you here tonight because he wants to break off that spirit of fear that's on your life that's keeping you bound and keeping you in this infirmity. I know, Lord. The Lord just told me all your joints are healed. Go ahead and move them around. You'll see they don't have pain in them anymore. Go ahead, move them around. You'll see. There's no more pain. She says, I have a weird. <sighs> but I don't have any more pain.
after 40 days, them about the kingdom. That's why in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible says, when you pray, pray like my kingdom come. <laughs> because God wanted us to see that the kingdom of God had not yet come. But it was coming. And he was saying, pray this day. Because you need the kingdom. The Bible tells us in <coughs> excuse me, Acts chapter 4. That they didn't understand Acts chapter 4, verse 16. They didn't understand that the miracle that was done. I'm going pink tonight. Real men can use pink. Are y'all with me? And where's pink? Hallelujah. But the Bible tells us that the miracle that was done unto this man was more than 40 years old. And the Bible tells us it was a notable miracle. It was an extraordinary miracle. It was a miracle that can't be explained. Are y'all with me now? My wife and I was preaching in a city called Natal, which is interesting, meaning Christmas, but we were in this city, and I'd had a conference there, and the night before we had a child that was in a wheelchair that came forward and got out of the wheelchair and walked. They put her back in the wheelchair, so I didn't know what happened afterward. We were sitting at the restaurant, and as we were sitting at the restaurant, the pastor got a phone call. So he picks up his cell phone, and he says, yeah? And they said, well, we just want to let you know that such and such, and told her name, is back in the back standing eating popcorn. It's a notable miracle. Are y'all with me? It's a miracle that doesn't get easily explained out. So we come the next morning and we're supposed to preach to pastors. The Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to preach on grace. But I want you to preach on it from the way that the Word of God tells us to preach it. And I said, what are you saying, Lord? He said, go to chapter 4 of the book of Acts. And look at verse 29. So I opened my Bible and I started to look at it. And it's there where they begin to cry out together as a church. And they say, Lord, behold the threatenings. And behold the persecution. And behold how people want to stop the power of God. And they said, Lord, please. Give unto us a spirit of boldness. Give us a spirit of boldness to stand up in the face of political accusation. Of kingdoms of this world that want to control and shut the mouths of the church. Give us power. And the Bible says that he gave them great grace. Most churches that talk about grace today say you can go to church but go to the bar after you're done. Most persons, most churches that talk about grace today say it's okay to have homosexuals in the pulpit. It's okay to have homosexuals singing in the praise and worship. That grace church has a form of godliness. But it's denying power. And in this last day, God is about to shake the nations. He's about to shake your house. He's about to shake this church. He's about to shake this city with not just some good message. But the power of God. Are y'all with me? Jesus sat down with his disciples 
after being raised from the dead, appeared unto them and manifested himself and talked to them about the most important thing. And that was, there's coming a day that the power of God is going to come upon the earth and I'm going to fill my church with glory. And I'm going to shake every nation. See, you're a nation. That's why sometimes we start shaking under these ministries. When you get in the power of God, sometimes it shakes you. Are y'all with me? I've been shaking since I was 16 years old. Hallelujah. I shook before anybody knew it was coming. Amen. And so what we have today in the last days, perilous times are coming. Dangerous times. We've seen it. Pandemics. I mean, we've getting all our foods altered. Are y'all with me? All the junk that's being put in our foods today is for one purpose, and that's to kill you. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me? Church, we need to wake up and realize the enemy don't want the church to stand up and be full of power and be full of demonstration and be full of the fire of God. That's why we have so many of these. I don't watch what I have to say here. Why we have so many of these churches. I'll just leave it at that. Are y'all with me? They don't want God to show up. They don't want power in the church. They don't want people to fall out. They don't want people to laugh because they haven't laughed in their lifetime. Are y'all with me? They don't want people to be healed and to have miracles and manifestations. But I'm telling you, there's a church that's about to rise that the gates of hell will not prevail against. And this church is going to be a church that will have double the manifestation, double the glory of God, double the presence of God, and double of the, of the mantle of God's presence in the earth. The Bible tells us in Haggai chapter 2, who's left among you in verse 3 who saw the temple in its first glory? And how do we see it now? In this context, I'm not going to go over all this, but in this context, they were building the second temple. And this second temple was not the appearance of the first temple. The first temple was lined with gold. Silver and gold is mine, says the Lord. He was basically saying, you might not see a temple that's lined with silver and gold, but I want you to know that you're mine, and I have all the silver and gold you need. If you look in the context, we have to go into other chapters and things, but, but you see something happening here. And, and the Bible says the latter church will be greater. If you go further down, the Bible tells us there's a promise that he's going to leave us. His spirits will abide within us. See, the Holy Spirit would come in the Old Testament upon saints that believed God. But today... The Holy Spirit's inside saints. And if we believe, out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. That's why I was so rude when I said to you, you're going to tell me no? Because God told me to talk to you. Are, are you all with me now? And so when I told you that, I wasn't being rude. She said, I don't even remember saying it. Are you all with me now? But there's a place here. I want you to see. Go with me. On down into verse 7. I will shake all nations. And they will come with the wealth of the all nations. And I'll fill my house with glory, says the Lord. The silver and gold's mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And the latter house will be greater than the former house. When he asked, do you compare this 
with the early glory. We have to remember in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But Jehovah said unto Samuel, Don't look at his countenance. It's not about the appearance of what we see. It's about what we can see by faith. He picked David, which was a rudy child, which means he wasn't the best looking. Are y'all with me? He was young. He was not the one that we would pick. But God picked him. You know why? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Bible says that the foolishness of this world, will con- the foolishness of God will confound the wise. That's why the cross is foolishness to those that think they're wise. But to those that believe, it's the power of God. It's the power of God unto salvation. Are y'all with me? The Bible tells us in this same context, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. So he was saying it don't matter what we look like. It don't matter how old we are. It don't matter our own intelligence. That's why in Acts chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, same context, the Bible says that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the kings and councilmen around them stood around and said, we don't know what's happened to this man, but we do know that it's notable and it's of God because we can't refute what God has done. It's a miracle. I'll tell you, when God begins to do miracles, you can't refute what's happening. Are y'all with me? Now, I want to bring you into the context of this because in that same context, he says, these men that has caused this miracle to happen are unlearned and ignorant men. (laughs) I'm so glad God chooses the unlearned and the ignorant to be able to confound the wise. Are y'all with me? Because it don't take anybody with any knowledge or any type of abilities above anybody else to raise the dead. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. So I was invited to this meeting with these pastors. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you want me to preach on a grace church? He said, yes. And so I got up and I began to preach how they were being persecuted And how they put Peter in jail. And how they were all being persecuted. And all these things were happening. And and I said, this is a church that needs grace. I said, there's a supernatural grace that comes upon a church like this. All get ready, church. Because I'll tell you, the next three months are going to be very interesting here in the United States. And I say that prophetically. They're going to be very interesting. And the truth of the matter is, we as a church are going to have to come to a revelation of the power of God. When they send a pandemic, we need to look at it on our arms and say, you die in the name of Jesus. When they poison our foods, we need to say, I can take any poisonous thing and it shall not harm me. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to begin to cry out to God and say, God, give us power. Give us power. Give us demonstration. Give us the anointing that we need to change this world. The Bible tells us, well, I'll go back to my story. And so my wife and I, we get up, and we're right in the midst of this meeting, and I'm preaching Well, right before the meeting, the pastor comes up to me and he says, sir, he says, can I ask you to pray for somebody that came here today? And I said, sure, I'll do that. I said, but let me preach first and then I'll go and do it as the spirit leads me to do it. He said, all right, that's fine because I'm preaching to pastors. So I didn't want to start a healing service. Are are y'all with me? I was being led. Jesus looked at his disciples and looked at Mary and Martha, and he said, I must go away for a week when he knew that Lazarus was dying. 
and he left. And then he looks at his disciples. His disciples says, don't we want to go back? Because Lazarus is dead. And Jesus said, he's dead. And they looked at him like he was crazy. Really, he looked at him and said, he's sleeping. Are y'all with me now? He's sleeping. And then his disciples say, oh, if he's asleep, we don't have to worry about going back. And he looked at him. He said, I go where the light leads me. While there's day, I'm led by the Spirit. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me now? There's a leading of the Spirit. And so, so I said to him, I said, Pastor, that's fine. We'll pray for her. But we're going to obey God, and first I'm going to minister. And so right in the middle of this message where I'm talking about, if you want a grace church, it's not a greasy grace church that allows sin in it. Now, not knowing, Pastor Joel, that just a week or so before that, half of the worship team that were gay left the church and went down to another church that immediately put them back up on the platform. And that pastor was there. <laughs> and so I didn't know what, what God was doing, but I didn't know he was there. I didn't know anything about this city. And so all of a sudden, the Lord said, now. So I stopped in my tracks. I said, what, Lord? He said, now pray for the child. And so I said, all right. I said, there's someone that brought a child here today that needs healing. You can bring her forward. So they bring a child that's about, how old do you think, honey? Four years old, five years old? Not even, huh? Two years old. They bring this child up, the mother with the child. And this child is wrapped in, uh, what's it called, uh, galls all over its body. And so they bring this child up. And I looked at the child and I just started crying. It had club hands and club feet. And so I brought my wife up. I said, honey, come up here with me. My wife came forward. We, we stood beside the mother and the child and we put our arms around the child and literally began to weep in compassion. Because here I am preaching about the grace and the power of God. And now God is saying it's time to demonstrate it. Oh, come on, somebody out with me. And so compassion came over me, just like in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, verse 23. Jesus walked in compassion. And so as, he, as, as they brought this child, I remember putting my arms around the child and just weeping. And my wife just weeping. And so we, we, we began to pray. The power of God fell. I watched the child's hands go like this. I looked down at the child's feet and it went like that I knew at that point this disease is completely healed hallelujah this child was literally on a list she was there's no way to get this healed what it is is if you touch her skin it falls off anything that touches the skin it falls off and so they were literally believing to get help financially and putting it on the news to raise money for this child. I'm telling you, when God begins to show up, there's something about notable miracles. And the Lord healed that child right there in front of these pastors. I took the opportunity to look at the pastors and say, you want a grace church? then you're going to have to have this. Come on, yes. Oh, come on, somebody. Right. You want a grace church, then you're going to have to have power. In the last days, 
the Lord is going to pour his spirit out in a greater measure. Our sons and daughters will prophesy. Our young men will have visions. Our old men will get our dream back. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. It's time you get your dream back. It's time you get your dream back. That's what I heard by the Spirit of God. God has a dream that he put inside of you for many years. The call of God upon your life has always been there. You've been faithful to the things that's inside of you. You're an intercessor. You're a prayer warrior. God's anointed you, showed you things in the past about what's coming in these last days. And the Lord says, it's time you get your dream back. The Bible tells us when they came out of Egypt, see, that's why it says in Haggai chapter 2, verse 5, that the same promise remains for us. That promise was God's not going to only give us the Spirit, but that the Spirit will remain in us. That same Spirit. And then he says he will fill their mouths with laughter. He'll give them their dream back. He'll heal everything that's, that's broken. And he'll bring prosperity upon their lives. Stand up. The anointing of God is falling on me right now. Very strong. <sighs> the enemy has tried his best to steal your joy. He's tried by physical attacks on your body. The enemy tried to kill you. He tried to take your life. Doctors gave up and said, there's nothing we can do. But God says, I have already done it. And the Lord says, all the tears that you have sown in intercession for this hour has been seen sown into this city and God says a great harvest is about to happen in this earth because of some of the intercession that you have brought forth God's already told you he has given you an anointing to heal cancer because he taken you out of the spirit of death and brought you into the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus and God says it's time it's time it's time it's time <laughs> somebody say ha 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 That's the anointing. Sometimes I get joy in me and I just have to bubble. It's the <laughs> yeah, there's the anointing right there. I release it from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And I thank you for the resurrection power of God flowing through you and to you and causing many to be set free from the spirit of cancer. <laughs> If you're being attacked with cancer, if you have been diagnosed in the past or anything to do with cancer, I want you to stand up right now. Stand up right now. If there's a spirit of cancer, please stand right in front of her and raise your hands. Look at her. Don't look at me. The power of God's on her to break that spirit of cancer. Come up this way. She said, it's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Spirit of cancer, be broken off of her. Now, in Jesus' name. There it goes right there. Receive it, 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 receive it. Here it comes. Take it now. 
They've raised your hands up there. Raise your hands up there. Are you here for that? Is it, is it, do you have it now or is it something that has come and gone? That's what I kept hearing in my spirit. Come and go. Come and go. Now I heard the Lord say, go. Yeah. Go. Go. And don't come back. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, see, not every time is cancer a demon. But many times it is. Many times it is. And when it comes and goes, it has the signs of the devil himself. I remember I was praying for a guy that was deaf. And he was an older gentleman. And he got healed instantly. His ears opened up. He picked me up and started carrying me through the church. I was just a young man at the time. I was only in my 20s. And he carried me through the church. I felt like my back was breaking. He was a big man. And so the next night I came, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, tell the man that got healed of deafness to come forward. So he came forward again, and he had these things in his ears. I looked at him, and I said, wait a second. I said, why do you have those in your ears? You were healed last night. He said, well, it came back last night. And I said, well, good. Because now we know it's the devil. <laughs> and when you know it's a devil, it's an easy thing. Just take care of it. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me. You're taught well in this church. You know that. Amen. And so I looked at him and I said, well, we're going to take authority over this thing. It's not going to come back ever again. And so I went to pray for him. I didn't even get to get near him, Pastor. And all of a sudden the power of God hit him. And he literally went the whole way back like this, being thrown back, just like this lady right here did, you know. Only he went all the way back through the, 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 the middle doors of the church building. And went flying into the lobby and laid on the floor. And he was instantly healed again. And this time it didn't come back. <laughs> I heard the Lord say, it's not coming back. Whew. Raise your hands up here. It's the power of God. I break it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command you, spirit of cancer, spirit of infirmity that continually torments this man, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now to depart and go back to where you came from. In the name of Jesus, go and don't come back. In Jesus' name, go all the way. I'm going to say it. Go to the fiery lake of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your power right now. Go. Somebody say hallelujah. I'll tell you, I, I agree with your pastor. Your pastor said something over dinner. We were talking and he said the Lord showed him don't send, you know, demons back to the pit or out into a, a dry place. But send them back to hell, back to the fiery lake of hell amen and when he said that that bared witness with me because one day i was casting a devil out and i sent him to the dry place and when i sent him to a dry place the woman that was getting the devil cast out of her had a tumor the size of a of a cantaloupe inside her belly i sat down at the dinner table and was ready to eat. And the pastor said to me, Brother, would you pray? I said, Yeah. And so I got ready to pray, and the Lord said to me, The woman sitting beside you has a cancerous tumor that's the size of a cantaloupe inside her belly. 
And so I stopped and I looked at the pastor and I said, sir, can I obey God? He said, absolutely. And so I looked at the lady sitting beside me and I said, ma'am, do you have a tumor inside your stomach the size of a cantaloupe? And she started crying. She said, how'd you know? I said, the Lord interrupted my prayer over a meal because he wants to heal you. And so she looked at me and I said, I'm going to pray for you. The power of God hit her. She fell out. She went back in her chair right at the dinner table. Interrupted our home dinner. Are y'all with me? I mean, this was a real missionary prayer. Amen. <laughs> and so she falls out. And all of a sudden, I cast the devil out of her seat. And all of a sudden, this man across from her, I didn't know it, but it was her husband. He starts to get his eyes rolled back in the back of his head. He starts to shake, and he flies off his chair and starts to manifest a demon right there in front of me. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, don't ever send it to a dry place because it just goes around to find someone else to go into. So that bears witness with me. Hallelujah. That thing's gone. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. See, there, I believe we're coming into a greater glory. A greater glory. You say, well, where are you going with this? The same where I started. Acts chapter 1 tells us he took 40 days to try to get us to understand that the kingdom of God's coming. And that kingdom's coming in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He's coming in power. He's coming in demonstration. Right. See, Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He said, I don't preach the gospel. My preaching is not with enticing or persuasive words of man's wisdom. Right. But it's in power. Right. The kingdom of God is not in word but it's in power. He said it's in power and demonstration. Whew. See, we've got to get demonstration back in the church. Demonstration is that he sent us to heal the sick, to have miracles, to have signs and wonders. Demonstration is that God will show up and manifest his glory in our midst, a greater glory. But where is that glory? It's inside you. There's a greater glory. I want to go over some things tonight, but I want you to see this. This greater glory is about to come on your generation with a double portion greater than you can even imagine. God always works with generations. If the first generation will be obedient and continue to carry the power of God, then your generation will be touched with it. And your generation will demonstrate it. But if we don't and we turn to a comfortable easy, greasy style of church, then we'll lose it. And the next generation will not have it. But going back through, Moses went into the temple. He could not even walk into the temple hardly because the glory was so strong. Joshua followed him and went to that temple. And stayed there when Moses came out. See, there's a place. We were singing the song, Open My Eyes. Elijah. Elijah was a good example of that. When he had the whole army of Amar, which was in the context of history, the Amorites. And the Amorites were giants in the land. And so all these giants in the land were coming against Elijah. 
wanting to take him out, wanting to destroy him. But Elijah had a servant with him. And he went up the mountain. And Elijah knew the Amorites are coming. The enemy's coming. In the last days, we're going to have dangerous times. We're going to have more pandemics. We're going to have attacks against our body that we can't even imagine. And the Bible tells us that Elijah looked at his servant. And I'm convinced it's the same servant. That's in 1 Kings chapter 18. When Elijah went up with a servant. Come on somebody, y'all with right. me now. That's right. And he went up the mountain. And he said, servant, what do you see? He says, I don't see anything. He said, come back and tell me seven times after you've been up that mountain. What do you see? He said, I don't see anything. And then the seventh time he comes running down and he says, I see it. I see it. I see a hand. It's the size of a man's hand. And it's full of rain. And it's coming upon this land. I believe the same servant or another servant, but it was a younger man, a next generational woman or man of God. Went up the mountain and Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see what I see. And when he opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire. He saw angels of the, of the armies of God all around. And he knew at that point, Elijah's okay. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and principalities and powers. Amar is an example. And it's the same exact symbol and city that we find in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Or really starting in chapter 18. And in chapter 18, Ahab comes to Elijah, or comes, excuse me, to Jehoshaphat. And he says to Jehoshaphat, let's go take Amar. I already own everything else. I want that city. Are you all with me? And so the Bible tells us, he says, no, we, we need to hear from God on this. But to make a long story short, he says, I want to go there. And I want to take out two things, two cities, two places. And you know what those places was? The place of the Levite. I think that's what's happening in the church today. Our Levites are becoming carnal. Our Levites are creating rock and roll concerts in churches. Our Levites are wanting lights, cameras, action. Our Levites are being destroyed, and so therefore there's no more carrying the glory of God into the house of God because it's all become nothing but entertainment. God forgive us. Do you know what the other city in that place was that he wanted to go up against? It's called the place of refuge. If the enemy can come into the house of God and take the power of God, and he can take it out of the hands of the Levites, he'll destroy the church. And church, we need the presence of God more than we need anything in this world. The house of God. Needs the glory of God. Jehoshaphat gave his son to Jezebel. And gave his son to marry Jezebel's daughter. What did he do? He gave up the next generation. He chose a form of godliness. But denying power. See every generation is greater. The Bible says there'll be a greater glory in the latter house. The anointing that was upon my spiritual father, Kenneth Hagin, is upon me. And I made up my mind when I left Ramah Bible Training Center, I won't leave without his anointing. A greater anointing. A greater mantle. 
every generation has a stronger anointing. Joshua came out stronger than Moses. David came out stronger than Samuel. You know why? Because Samuel allowed his children to commit fornication at the altar. What are we doing today? The church has become a form of godliness, and we're missing the power. I'm convinced that this is the hour that God is about to do a manifestation of his glory in the earth on people that's an ex- a, a sacrifice that's ready to receive the fire of God upon their lives and be burnt in the presence of God so that his glory can fill the house and manifest in ways that we've never seen before. I believe with all my heart someone's being healed in their right ankle right now. Their right ankle. And that the healing power of God is on me right now. Who is that? It's pain in that right ankle. The healing anointing's here. Who is that? You've been having pain in your right ankle. I believe it's the right. Yes, it's the right. Stand up here. Come up here. I'll tell you what, the enemy's a liar. The devil's a liar. He says, I've had no pain in my ankle but this whole service. You have that also? Your foot was rebuilt and it didn't go together correctly. Stand right here. (sighs) Raise your hands, you also. I felt it was you. And you looked at her, and she looked at you. But you didn't, you kind of went like this. You're here now, come up here. What if she was feeling her pain? So you were probably picking up a word of knowledge. That's interesting. He, he said that he's never had a problem in his ankle. He's never had any pain in his ankles, but the whole service he's been dealing with pain in his ankle, and he's going, what is this, the whole service? He's been like, what's this? And, and you're the one that has it. It's your right ankle, isn't it? Raise your hands up, then close your eyes. The anointing of God's coming on you right now. Now, there it is right there. I'm not even going to touch you. The power of God's all over you. That's it right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it. (sighs) (sighs) Now, I want you to move your ankle around. It's gone. (laughs) Stand up here because you're going to jump up and down. Jump up and down. Somebody say hallelujah. You have no more pain. Raise your hands up there and just receive. I heard that, Lord. Amen. The debilitating headaches that have been coming against you and putting you even in bed. Migraines that are unbearable (sighs) are going to leave tonight in Jesus' name. (sighs) Migraine headaches, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. And I say no more. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. In Jesus' mighty name, I release it. Now, here it goes. <laughs> I heard the Lord say, laughter does good like a medicine. It's a joy that you can't explain. The Bible tells us that. Amen. There's a joy that's unexplainable. It's in- inexplicable. I can't say it in English. I guess it's unexplainable. Amen. And it's inside of you. (laughs) 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 
There's an anointing there. Raise your hands up here. You had surgery on your right ankle. They rebuilt your foot completely. And it was two years, August 18th. And I kept demanding more imaging. And she didn't tell me the results of the first one. And then I demanded more. And she said it was worse. And I said, what's worse? She didn't tell me there was anything. So um, there was bone marrow edema and bruising in two bones and the screw where she had removed one tendon from behind my four toes and put them on the inside of my foot. That screw backed out and is somewhere in my foot. They said in not a good place, but I'm not going back to that. <laughs> Ra raise your hands up there. We're going to believe God. I mean, I love that song. I know you guys probably sing that song. I've seen metal disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that screws are disappearing. I, I believe that every bit of pain in this right ankle is completely healed. I believe uh, you're, 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 better, you're more good than what you... <laughs> Whoa, there's the anointing right there. There's the anointing right there. There's the anointing right there. Yes, I know, Lord. Amen. Rachel, come up here and run with her. Go ahead and take her for a run. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take her for a run. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. I've seen cancer disappear. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Look at me once. Jump up and down. You don't have no more pain. It's gone. Did you have pain? Jesus. I had pain in my whole foot. And now? I have a little bit on the inside. On the inside. Just a little bit on the inside. When I jump. Come up here. When you jumped, you had a little pain on the inside. Would that have been a lot of pain earlier? Um, probably. I've not been able to You've never been jumper jump running, huh? <laughs> She's never, never been able to run or jump. No, so. I did Zumba before the surgery. Uh -huh. had trouble just walking. She did Zumba before the surgery, and then after that she had a trouble just even walking. She's running and jumping now. Come here. Put your hand right on the inside of that foot. That's it, right there. Right there. Now raise your hands up. The same spirit that's on me is in her. I, I, I believe that's what God wants. He wants to release in you miracles. I mean, it's time the church rise up and start having our shadow heal the sick. I love this church because you're so ready to work for God. You're ready to heal the sick, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. It, it, whew, there it goes right there. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. Take it, honey. That's the anointing right there. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Whew. And your shoulders being healed. Your shoulders are being healed. The anointing's coming on your shoulders right now. There's an alignment in your upper part of your back that's causing your pain to be all over the shoulders and the higher part of your back. Honey, come up here with me. Come up here with me. Lay your hands. I see him putting your hands on her back, but in the, from the front. From the front, like that. Yes, yes, that's what I saw. That's what I saw. In the name of Jesus. Go! And don't come back in Jesus' name. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. I release it in Jesus' name. There it goes. 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 Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, the Bible says there'll be a greater glory. The greater glory is going to be, you know, if, if you go to when Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, in my father's house 
There's many mansions. That word mansions doesn't mean, and, and we always preach it this way, and I don't disagree with it, but I don't agree with it, if that makes sense. I'm just not sure of it. But we got this idea that we're going to have mansions in heaven, you know, and that we're all going to have our little dog on the porch and, and a plaque on the door, you know. And uh, I'm not looking for heaven to be that. Are you all with me? I, I mean, I've heard preachers say that there's pizzerias in heaven. There's all kinds of strange stuff in heaven. I, I could care less. I just want to see Jesus. Amen. I, I just want to see Jesus. I, I'm not going there to see flowers talk to me. I have the Holy Ghost to talk to me. Amen. I don't need a flower to talk to me. Are y'all with me? Now, I'm not, I'm not pointing that out that, for that reason, but I want you to see that he says there's many dwelling places in my Father's house. And if you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it tells us we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And if you continue on down, and I'm not going to go there because the Lord's flowing in healing right now. But uh, if you continue on down in that anointing, you'll find in, in that scripture, in that, that context and chapter, you'll find that he says that you were created from the beginning of the foundation of the earth. God has your plan. He has your destiny. He has you predestined to fulfill what he has for your life from the time you were born. Are you all with me? Before you were even born again, the Bible says, when you were yet in sin and when you were out doing your own delightful things in the flesh, He saved you. And by grace, He raised you to seat in a heavenly place. What's that heavenly place? It's a dwelling place in the most high place of God. God already has you in a place that's far above all principalities and powers. And then he goes on down in that chapter and he says, now I'm not going to leave you comfortless down there in the earth either. Because the truth of the matter is, is if all God does is put us in heaven to sit and just believe that we're going to sit in heaven forever, then we're missing it down here. So he says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless down here. I'm going to send you the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and put it inside your belly. And that spirit will be the spirit of grace. That anointing will be everything you need. I'm going to put it right inside of you. And then if you go on, he says, the works is, do you believe that you're in the Father? And this is in verse 10 and 11. He says, if you can believe that you're in the Father and that the Father is in you. Oh, praise God. That means when you're walking down the street, you have the Father in you. That means when you walk up to someone that's bound up with disease, you have the Father in you. If you can believe that you're in the Father and that the Father's in you, you'll ask me anything and I'll give it to you. And he said, but if you can't believe it, believe it for the very works that you've seen in my ministry. Because the works that I do, so shall you do but greater works. Now, he doesn't say you're going to do greater works because you're greater than Jesus. He says you're going to do greater works because he goes to the Father. See, what that means is, is when he goes to the Father, there's a new generation rising up. He said, I'm about my Father's business. Why? Because he knew when he went to the Father, the business would keep on growing. The harvest is ready. The harvest is white. He's just looking for laborers that will step into the place of God and begin to be used mightily of God. Are y'all with me? And to do works that he did and even greater works. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all with me now? <sighs> There's somebody that's having problems even turning their neck. They can't even turn their neck without pain. The power of God's here. In Jesus' name, to loosen up that neck and to do some chiropractic healing. Are y'all with me? Who's that person? Stand up here. Just stiff and you can't move your neck. Stand up here. The power of God's about to fall on you. 
I see not only in your neck, but I see it going down into your into your lower back, which is your your, your sciatic nerve that shoots down into your legs. And that, that, that pain that shoots down into your legs, it's like almost a nerve that's being pinched. <sighs> that's why your neck is so tight right now and can't turn because there's something being pinched. There's something being stopped. <sighs> that's the power of God right now coming over you in the name of Jesus. There it is right there. I release her from the bondage of this sciatic nerve. And I command this back to not only be healed, but to remain healed. And I say in Jesus' name, from this day forward, devil, you're a liar. I break the spirit of infirmity that's continually coming back to fight this body, to fight this faith. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the greater one quickens the mortal flesh and causes even the darkest demonic power that's causing pain in this body to no longer come back but go to where it belongs. And that is that place where the fiery pit of God the power place where the enemy is judged. I release now. In the name of Jesus. Healing in the hips. Somebody right near me is having pain in their hips. That's him. Stand up here. Raise your hands up there. It has to do with that lower part of your back. Stand out here. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. I release the anointing of God over his lower back right now in Jesus' name. And I command in Jesus' name. Whew, there it goes right there. 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 In the name of there it goes. Take it again. Take it again. Now! Take it, 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 take it. That's the anointing, say. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. I release it now. I release it. Somebody go... Somebody just look at him and say, fall down. <laughs> Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Get him drunk, Lord. <sighs> I've been having people in my meetings freezing. I had a lady just in my last meeting. She froze for 25 minutes. She just stood there in a weird position. She froze under the anointing. You say, well, why did that happen? I don't know. It happened to me one time before. And uh, several years later, I found out that I had left my body at that exact time and went to Brazil. <laughs> that anointing's on you right now. The power of God's all over you. <laughs> the Lord shows me that the enemy has tried to stop up the financial realm of your business. The Lord told me that the enemy is trying to drain your business and that there's some in leadership positions, authorities that are in place are there to destroy and they've been sent by the enemy to divide the thoughts of men and to raise up against the authority and raise up against the one God's anointed to reign. And the Lord says, the silver and gold's mine, says the Lord. And I'm about to return seven times what the devil stole. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, when the enemy, the thief, is found out, he has to give back seven times. And so the Lord says, 
tonight and from this day forward, declare over your business that the enemy owes me seven times. The enemy owes me seven times. And God says, you've always had the greatest desire to be the biggest tither in this church. And God says, I heard your prayer. I heard your heart. And I will give you the desires of your heart, says the Lord. And great wealth is coming your way. Great wealth is coming your way. Because the Lord said, I have the say. <sighs> in the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of God over him right now in Jesus' name. The anointing that breaks every yoke and lifts every burden, I command this body to be completely restored. The anointing's flowing through you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sir, stand up. Stand out in the middle of the aisle, move around, do something you couldn't do before. Yep, without pain. Move it around. You'll see it's gone. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stand up here, prophet. The prophetic anointing has been birthed in your heart. You shall see it. And God says he's never forsaken you, never left you, and never left the anointing upon your life. The enemy tried to steal it. But God says I'm raising up the anointing upon you once again. And the demonstration and the power of God's anointing is going to be made manifest once again. Because the Lord says he forgives the brokenhearted. He forgives those that are wounded. He breaks off condemnation and fear of the future. And God says, I will call. I will bring out of the fire without even smelling like smoke. God says, it's a new. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, there's an anointing that God's bringing to the church. I believe we're in it in this day. We're in it in this hour. And God wants us to go from Acts chapter 4 where he shakes the building that they're in. Because that's what he's going to do to this church. He's going to shake this church. But we're going to go from that. And I'm prophesying over this church right now. We're going to go from that into Acts chapter 5. And in Acts chapter 5, there was not one poor person in the church. The Lord said, church, get ready. Because I'm about to bring you into a great realm of wealth and riches. I heard the Spirit of God say over this church that I am the God of the silver and the gold. And the Lord says, as I continue to pour out my glory in this latter house, this church will never lack because I will cause even the ones that should not prosper to prosper. Great wealth will come to your houses. Great riches will come to your homes. And God says, I'm going to begin to pour a river of wealth into your city. <sighs> <laughs> Stand up, you four. <sighs> the anointing that you wrote in that book. I read that book. I love it. It's a great book. <sighs> I to tell you the truth. I didn't feel led to read it for a long time. 
And I read books when I'm led to. And it was about three, I guess about six months ago, I read that book. And there's great revelation in that book. And there's great wealth that's being transferred down to the next generation. <sighs> the Lord said, you never entered into the fullness of that wealth. But you know that it belongs to you. And it belongs to your generations. And the Lord says to me, the anointing is upon these two to go into a new, fresh wind of financial gain. <sighs> There's a great wealth that is going to break forth in your lives. I prophesied over a man down in Brazil by the Spirit, didn't know him from anything. Young man, I pulled him out and I said, God is going to make you a millionaire. And he hit the ground, drunk in the Holy Ghost, laid on the floor and laughed. I got up and after the meeting, the pastor walked up to me and said, he doesn't even have a job. I said, that's all right, because God's going to make him a millionaire. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so I remember what happened. It was several years. It was almost a year later, wasn't it, honey, something like that, a year later. And uh, a year later, the pastor of that church came to Orlando. And when he came to Orlando, he said, I got to talk to you. I said, what's going on? He said, do you remember that young man you prophesied over that he'd be a millionaire? I said, yeah. He said, well, he's not only a millionaire, he's a multimillionaire. <sighs> and so I went back to preach in that church several months later. And the pastor walked up to me and he said, that man's not only a multimillionaire, he, he's buying a bank. Oh, hallelujah. I heard the Spirit of God say that revelation that God birthed in your spirit is for the next generation. And that revelation is going to be great wealth. <sighs> Take hands off four of you. The anointing's about to come upon you. <sighs> I remember one time I was praying for people to receive the spirit of wealth. And I didn't even know if it was Scripture, but I heard the Spirit of God tell me to do it. And uh, the Lord said to me, watch what happens. And the power of God was so strong. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, this is a stronger anointing than healing. He said, the silver and gold belongs to me. Hallelujah. There's something about wealth God desires for the church. And I heard the Spirit of God say, Joel, that God's about to pour in a great wealth for this church. Whew. And this is a part of it. This is a part of it. That's a part of it. There's an anointing. There goes the power of God right now. Raise your hands up here. Here comes the anointing. Here comes the anointing over this family. I thank you for family wealth. I thank you for great wealth. I thank you, Father God, for more. More glory and more wealth. Let your presence, this revelation that you put in this man's heart, let it come upon every generation from here and out in Jesus' name. From every generation. I heard that, Lord. The Lord said, uh, the Lord said take his hand, Nicholas, because it's coming on you too. Whew. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Take it now! Now here comes Nicholas. Take it now in Jesus' name. <sighs> Stand up here. The anointing God's coming on me right now. Very strong. There's a healing coming over your stomach area that has something to do with a reflux. It has something to do with pain that continually haunts you. And uh, the Lord told me there's a healing anointing right now flowing like oil. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the Bible tells us 
Laughter does good like a medicine because it's a healing oil. It's an oil of gladness. It's an anointing that's in the church. And I thank you, Lord, that that joy, that anointing is going to cause the lining of the stomach to be completely restored and cause the reflux that goes up into the heart to be completely ceased. In Jesus' name, right now, no more ometro straw or whatever it is. I thank you for the healing power of God flowing over her now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, somebody's being healed in their right knee. There's a healing anointing here tonight. There's a miracle anointing. Someone's being healed in their right knee. Is that you? Stand up. Oh, it's in your hand. You broke your elbow and your wrist. Do you have pain there now? Walk over here. And as you walk over here, the power of God's going to fall on you. There it is right there. It's all over you. It's all over you. It's all over you. It's all over you right now. There's a healing oil. There's a healing anointing flowing down. <sighs> there it goes right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. In Jesus' name, <sighs> I release it. The Lord said, now go ahead and move it around. You'll see it's no longer tight. Go like this. It's no longer tight. It's no longer tight, is it? <laughs> somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now the Lord told me somebody in their right knee, is that you? Well, you're in your left knee. Somebody in their right knee is being healed. Amen. Raise your hand up there. Father, I thank you for the anointing of God coming upon the mother of this house. <laughs> I call her what she is, Lord. The mother of this house, the anointing of an intercessor, the power of God that flows through her. I release this knee right now in Jesus' name. Cartilage, be restored right now in the name of Jesus. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. Receive, receive, receive. That's the power of God all over you right now. I release it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it now, Father. We thank you for it now, Father. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. I release the healing anointing over this left knee. In Jesus' name. Come up here with me. Come, come up here. Yep. Come up here. Uh, raise your hands up there. See, in this atmosphere, miracles happen. That's really what God wants to show us in these atmospheres. God will manifest His glory without a preacher. There's miracles happening all over this place right now. If you, if you need a miracle, I'm telling you, just start doing something. You'll see the miracle power of God's flowing through you. Touch her left knee. Touch her left knee. In Jesus' name. We release right now. There it goes right there. That's the power of God right there. That's the power of God right there. You're being healed too. Take it now. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Now bend down and go like this. <laughs> it feels weak. She locked it up pushing 320 on a leg press. Bless your heart. Hey, <laughs> years ago, all right. And don't have any more pain? The pain? Touch her again. Raise your hands up there. That's it right there. We release it. We release it. Whew. That's the anointing right there. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> uh, now it's going. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, there's a... Stand up here. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. The anointing God's coming on you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I call all palpitations... 
I call this heart solid. I call every bit of palpitations and panic to get off of this body. The Lord told me he's showing him tonight a notable miracle. He's showing him a a notable fact. I knew nothing about his heart, but God does. And he's telling you right now, every palpitation that has come into your life in the last three years is ceasing tonight because of the power of God that's flowing through you. In the name of Jesus, I also heard by the Spirit of God, your stomach and every bit of pain that is deep down in the gut area, it almost feels like it's in the, in the, in the groin area, is completely being restored now in Jesus' name. I release it in the name. Now, there it goes, sir. There it goes, sir. There it goes right there. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. I release it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name right now. No more palpitations. I heard the Spirit of God say no more palpitations. No more waking up, sweating. No more palpitations. It's gone in Jesus' name. It's not a spiritual thing. It's a physical thing. And I heard the Spirit of God say it happened three years ago. Two years, something happened. But it's no more in Jesus' name. No more. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I'll tell you, we got three, three, three nights, three, three services where God's going to do miracles in this place. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say glory. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stand up, you two. I heard the Spirit of God say, I took you where I sent you because I prepared you for what I have for you. The Lord said it took you away from what your basic Life and natural thing and direction was going, but it was seasonal. And he brought you back here because he has a destiny here in this city for you. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. The call upon the two of your lives is to affect this next generation. God's not called you to the young youth. He's called you to your age group. Because this age group is running from God. This age group is lost to God. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm going to use you to transform this generation. God prepared you. He sent you, and he took you away to almost like a desert place to learn on the backside of the wilderness. But it was because he had a purpose to bring you back together because the enemy tried to destroy what God had put together. But the Lord says the enemy did not win. He lost. And so now the desert's over. And it's a new day. And God says it's a time for you to enter in to the promised land. And in this promised land, this is the place that I've called you. I anointed you from the time you were born. You were raised in the ministry. You were raised in the house of God. You knew ministers that flow in the same anointing you're seeing here tonight. And you ran from it. But God says, no more running. It's time to face your destiny. Because God has a plan 
and a destiny for the two of you. <sighs> what the enemy tried to break up, God says, I'm going to bring back. <sighs> Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> joy, 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 joy. The Lord told me, he said, she shed so many tears. Tears are seeds that go into the fields of harvest. That's why the Bible says in Psalms 126 that tears are seeds for joy and for laughter. Whew. That's why you just feel like you can laugh right now. Because God heard your prayer. He heard your prayer. He heard your prayer. Stand up here, sir. God's not finished. Pastor Joel, come up here with me. It's been prophesied over you. It's been spoken over you. Some of the things, same things I just said. And it's been spoken by this man of God. I feel like you're to pray for him. I don't know what you have in your spirit, but. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. Yes, Lord. Shoko to my dials. Shohor nam redish to kandaname. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So remember in Jesus' name. <sighs> yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Shaka talavano custe ninka deus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I heard the Lord say he's heard your prayer. He's heard your prayer. At times you prayed against what I just prophesied. At times you've said, God, I don't even want it to happen. But the Lord says, I heard your heart. And I have great things for your family. Your daughter will come back to the fire of God. She was once on fire for God. And God says, I'm bringing her back. I'm bringing her back. Because what I begin, I finish. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. I'll tell you what, we're seeing so many miracles here tonight. Whew. Stand up, sir. The power of God's falling on you right now. Walk out in the aisle. I, I'm not going to keep you here all night because we could go until all night. Hallelujah. Whew. This church is hungry. Healing power of God's going over you right now in Jesus' name. I saw in the spirit, almost as if there's a, a fatigue that has come over you. And at times you feel like your lungs are almost like not even breathing. At times you feel like you're having shortness of breath. But it's the fatigue that comes over you. There's an anointing blowing over you right now in Jesus' name. I heard the Spirit of God say, and I don't say this lightly, but I heard it by the Spirit. There's been a spirit of death sent to try to destroy you. And that spirit of death is trying to attack you in so many different ways that you can't even find them anymore. But I heard the Spirit of God say, the spirit of life 
that's in Christ Jesus hath made you free from the law of sin and death. Meaning if you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap the benefits of the Spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap death and destruction. But you're sowing to the Spirit. You're sowing to the Word. You're sowing to righteousness. And God says he hears your heart and he hears your prayer. And this spirit of infirmity, of of fatigue, I keep hearing the word fatigue, that comes over you and tries to take you. It's even brought you to the point where you've said, I don't even know if I want to live at times. Well, we don't allow that. We don't allow that. Somebody say amen. Amen. We don't allow that in this this church anyway. In this church, there's no, I don't think I want to live allowed to be spoken. Come on, somebody. You got awful quiet out there. But in this church, it's not allowed. (laughs) And with that woman, it's definitely not allowed. I'm just speaking by the Spirit, but I can tell she takes care of you. (laughs) She takes care of him in the Spirit. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. I just saw this thing getting off of you once and for all. I heard the Spirit of God say it's going to lift off of me like like something you feel, just a weight, just lifting off of you once and for all. Now there's the power of God right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I command the spirit of heaviness and fatigue. Get off now in Jesus' name. And I speak the healing power of God over these lungs. There it is right there. There it is right there. Breathe in life. That's it. Breathe in life. That's it. (laughs) Take it, take it, take it, take it. In Jesus' name. I'll tell you, I can't get away from it. Don't, Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come up here. Take his hand, raise it up. The spirit of joy that's upon her is coming on you. (laughs) Everybody just say, it's time to be filled with joy. Joy. Joy, joy. I release it now. In Jesus' name. Somebody say glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now every head bowed, every eye closed. As we close this service out tonight, I, I tried to preach a little bit, but didn't get into too much. But again, I don't apologize for that because he follows his word with signs and wonders. Amen. And not only that, the Bible tells us that he doesn't preach the word with enticing words of men's wisdom, but demonstration and power. I believe with all my heart what God wanted to be said was said. There's a people here tonight that God is going to raise up for this next generation with great demonstration and power. Great anointings. Great power. Amen. Now, if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been invited to this meeting, never been in anything like this. Maybe you have, and maybe you just haven't ever really given in. But if you'd like to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand up right now. We're closing out. Amen. Amen. I see one hand right here. Amen. Two hands. 
Amen. Anybody else? We're going to let you make a decision that will make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. You'll never be the same. You coming back tomorrow night? You. Good. Because the Lord's got something for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I remember the anointing that God's placed on your life. He's not finished. Amen. Praise God. You two young children, come up here. If you had your hand raised up. Well, you're, you're more than a children. You're a you're pretty, pretty big boy. You had your hand up too, honey. She says, no, I don't want to go forward. I want you to raise your hands up, son. Just close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, I want everything you have for me. I accept right now that you died on the cross and that you rose from the dead. I believe in my heart that you now have come to abide in me. And I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. From this day forward, I am no longer bound to hell, but I'm going to heaven. I'm going full of the power of God. And I'm going to be used mightily by God. Now let my fire that's inside of me begin to stir up. Stir up and burn the very chaff that holds me back. I receive. The fire of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus, is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is good. He is good. All, the time. All the time. And all the time. All the time. He, is he is good. Amen. Praise God. Pastor, come on up. And we'll see you tomorrow night. What time is it, Pastor? Seven? Five o'clock tomorrow night. Amen. We'll see you at five.